Right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another week. Uh, it's so good to see all of you. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. Uh, maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Yes, go ahead, Rosalind. Let's pray. Wonderful Heavenly Father God, we come before your throne of grace this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for your faithfulness for this day, O Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies that are new every day, Lord. We receive your mercies, your grace upon each and every one of us gathered here, Lord, for this day. Lord, we bless your name, Father God, even as we are here to study your word, to meditate your word, Lord. Lord, we pray, Father God, that the calling that you have over our lives, Father God, Lord, let us be equipped, Father God, with your word and let us fulfill the call that you have called us for, Lord. Lord, we thank you and we bless you. We also bless our dear pastor as he leads us, leads us, Lord, in your word, Father God. Give him, bless him with your anointing, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we bless you and we receive your ministry for today, Lord. We thank you and we give all the glory to you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Rosalind. All right. So everyone doing okay? Uh, I know there's a lot of courses and a lot of learning, but I, I, I trust that it's been a blessing. Okay. So let's pick up from uh, where we left last week. Last week, we uh, looked at chapter two and chapter two, we talked about the evangelist and how Jesus was, was and is the best example of uh, the evangelist. So we looked at seven important points. One was he was empowered by the Holy Spirit. Uh, he, uh, the audience was always the poor, the lost, the sinners. The message was repentance. Uh, his method, again, was through signs, wonders, and miracles. We see that he traveled to places. The Lord Jesus also you know, encountered challenges, demonic oppressions, demonic encounters, unbelief. Uh, and so uh, we as, you know, as believers, even as we minister to people, uh, you know, it, it's nice when we don't find challenges in front of us. But if there are challenges, uh, right, we are to you know, trust God because even the Lord Jesus himself had challenges, right? So he's the best example that we can follow. And finally, we saw support. Not only did Jesus receive support, but he also, uh, you know, blessed other people to go and do the ministry. And we as believers must model our life, uh, you know, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because people, yes, there are wonderful ministers of God. And the Lord has really anointed and blessed many of them, wonderful ministries. Uh, but Jesus is our best example, right? And and when we look to Jesus, that's when we can, you know, we we'll know that, okay, we are on the right page. We are on the right way. And uh, not only in this, you know, what we are learning, but in everything of our life, uh, we are to model uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, so any questions from what we studied last week? Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask, or you can even post your questions on the chat, and uh, we'll take some time to answer them. Right. OK, so shall we move into chapter 3? Now, let's look at the evangelist in the early church, right? So we looked firstly about the fivefold ministry. That the evangelist is uh, like you know a part of the fivefold ministry, and it is a it is from God. Secondly, we looked at how Jesus is the best example, and so what happened? Now Jesus left the example. After that, did evangelism stop, or did the evangelists uh, that we talk about uh, have they stopped, or are they? still functioning now so let's look at the early church right the evangelist in the early church now we must consider three greek words now it's not necessary that you should know these uh, greek words by heart but 
this will just help us get a good understanding, right? So in your notes, three Greek words. Uh, Eugalian, which is a noun, which means a bearer of good tidings. Now, this is mentioned about 50 times in the New Testament, right? Uh, I'm not sure if I'm getting the pronunciation right, but it's Eugalian, right? Uh, it's a noun, and which means a bearer of good tidings. So in the, in the New Testament, when we read it, in the, in the Greek, 50 times, there are there's this mention of a bearer of good tidings right now the second greek word is igalizo which is a verb which is used again 77 times in the new testament and what does this mean it means to preach the gospel right so look at these two words right both words first one means a bearer of good tidings right um, you know, in 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 uh, during the Old Testament or even during those uh, ancient times, what used to happen was, uh, you know, I was reading of this whole thing of uh, when you know the psalmist writes about beautiful feet, uh, and it's really interesting that during those days uh, there would be these servants or these you know uh, people who will their only job was to deliver messages right so they would move from one city to another and it was probably a rough walk uh, they probably had to go through difficult places and if the person carrying the message carried a good message a positive message an encouraging message they would call that person you know they would say he has beautiful feet uh, but when you look at the feet, it's all worn out and, you know, with blisters probably because of the, you know, road that was traveled during those times. Uh, so what, what am I trying to get at? Uh, when you and I, it says here, you Galian, a bearer of good tidings. When we bear good message, when we bear the message of the gospel, we have beautiful feet. Now picture this. You think the Lord Jesus had beautiful feet? I don't think so. Right? I don't think Jesus had beautiful feet. Why? Because he would have walked on those Palestinian roads full of dust. Uh, now remember, he's man, right? So he would have, you know, had difficult time walking. Most of the time we see him, he was walking, and probably his feet were all sewn and blistered and bruised but he was a bearer of glad tidings he had beautiful feet so it's not about the physical it's that's what the psalmist is writing right beautiful are the feet that bring the gospel this is what it means because we are bearers of good tidings right and the second one was eugelizio which is to preach the gospel now a bearer of good tidings it's not only about a positive message right uh, remember nowadays we live in a day and age when people you know paul writes and he says there'll come a time when people will want to hear messages that tickle their own ears right they don't want to hear about sin about repentance about the cross about heaven about hell just give us a good message right give us a you know a positive message now there's nothing wrong in being positive but if we talk about you know only positivity anybody can talk about that right if you look at the world and you look at these wonderful speakers all of us can talk about positivity and they they have a lot of you know they put in their own example life examples be positive which is encouraging, but remember, if it's not the gospel, if it's not the word of God, you remember what we talked about in Romans 1.16, the message of the gospel is powerful, right? It is the gospel, it is the word of God that transforms a person's heart. So these positive talks, 
right is it's good but it's not going to you know make a change it's not going to you know impact the person's life because it's only the holy spirit who can do that yes of course there'll be some level of impact like maybe some people get encouraged and say hey you know this person did all of this through all these failures he or she was positive and i want to be like yeah that 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 could be there but we don't see a real change because when we preach the gospel it is a power of god unto salvation there's no salvation in a positive message right so i hope you're getting what i'm saying uh you know many times we go to colleges we and uh, we we talk to students it's you know people from different faiths we we try not to end with a positive message because they can get it from anywhere right even if we give a positive message the point is the gospel needs to be preached even if it's just 2 minutes you know we're all sinners and you know this is what jesus did for us and jesus has died for us and now we can live just 2 minutes we can do it uh, and that is what preaching the gospel is right now why are these two words here right uh, these two greek words bearer of good tidings and a person who preaches the gospel because this is the purpose and the ministry of the evangelist the evangelist is main purpose is that he preaches the gospel and he wins souls for the kingdom of god right that's the main main ministry and the main purpose of an evangelist a couple of days back i met a person and he was in the ministry and uh, he is in the ministry and as i was talking to him he you know one of the things we, we were just going on talking and he said he was an evangelist and and so i began to talk to him even more uh and i said okay so how do you evangelize you know tell me give me some you know in the day and age like this um uh, things have changed so uh, what do you do and and so he said something uh which really struck my mind he said that uh, nowadays i don't go out and minister to people but only if, you know people call me i go i preach and i come back uh then i said okay so what about healings and miracles yeah they they do happen at times uh but then if you look at you know this the gospel if you look at what jesus is telling us he tells us that the ministry of the evangelist is to preach the gospel to people meaning we, wherever we are whatever we are doing it's not that we should be on a stage to preach the gospel the characteristic of an evangelist we saw that right the lord jesus when he met the samaritan woman he didn't say okay wait come to the mountain there there'll be 10000 odd people and there i will minister to you he didn't say that right? he, he did what he had to do he he didn't say to those who wanted healing uh, say hey you come for the healing crusade that's happening on uh, the second mountain and then we'll meet there no it was then and there and so i felt that you know there are there, they're coming to a time when people are losing the essence of being an evangelist right it's it's come to a point where you know i say hey i travel to a place you know i look around one day is to travel to see the how beautiful the place is and the second day is to go on the stage preach you know just you know sh share a couple of messages and then the third day travel back ministry is done that's not what it is all about right it is it is more than that right and we look at a few examples also in the new testament right now the third word is you go you go listis which means the title of the evangelist right uh, the word evangelist is used three times in the new testament that's interesting right it's used only three times uh and this is like i think one of the most important aspects of the gospel that is to evangelize to reach out but it's used only three times let's look at 
those three times where it's uh, where this word the title evangelist is mentioned right acts chapter 21 and verse 8 yes can anyone please read acts 21 and verse 8 Acts 21, verse 8. Yes, anyone can read, please. Acts 21, verse 8. Living the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip, the evangelist, one of the seven. Right. So we see there the title is being used, Philip the Evangelist. Now, if we if we study the book of uh, you know uh, of, of of the life of Philip, it's very interesting. Uh, and you see in the New Testament because he's not in one place. Right? And we look at it a little bit later on as well. He's never in one place. He's always moving about, and there's as this there's this urge of reaching out to people right and so this is the first time in the bible philip the evangelist the, the title has come out there right next one is ephesians 4 11 and we know this right this is the fivefold ministry paul is writing to the church and he's saying okay this is the ministry of the uh fivefold ministry of the holy spirit um, the apostle the prophet the evangelist the pastor and the Teacher. So he's mentioning there the title of evangelist. Let's read 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. 2 Timothy 4 and 5. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. But you keep your head in all situations, end your hardship, do the work of an evangelist, discharge all the duties of your ministry. Amen. Amen. Right. Now, let me ask you a question. Paul is writing 2 Timothy chapter 4. He's writing the letter, the epistle of Timothy. This is the second letter. Where is Timothy? Come on, answer this. Uh, any, any one of you. Everyone should know this. Where is Timothy? You can type your answers. You can unmute an answer. Where is Timothy during this time? I, yes, Lubega. I think he's in. I think he's in Ephesus. Yes, that's that's correct, Lubega. So, what is he doing in Ephesus? He, he, he's pastoring the church in Ephesus. Yeah. Thank you so much, Isaac. Right. Thank you, Lubega and Isaac. Yes, that's perfect. He's in Ephesus. And he's pastoring the church in Ephesus. Now, the apostle Paul himself commissioned Timothy and said, go, you be here, you pastor the church, right? Now, why is Paul writing this? He's saying, Paul is telling Timothy to do the soul winning ministry of the evangelist, right? Now, before this, Paul has written Ephesians, yes? He's written Ephesians much before this, right? The letter to the Ephesians. And he's telling them, okay, there's fivefold ministry. But here he's saying, Paul, you are the, sorry, Timothy, you are the pastor of the church, but do the work of the evangelist also. That is what? Winning souls for the kingdom of God. So you see, the apostle Paul is not restricting Timothy and saying, Timothy, you're a pastor, so you raise up, uh, you know, uh, bishops and leaders and uh, uh, you know volunteers and all of that and use them as evangelists you sit in the church we don't see that happening right so you see that the ministry gifts can co-function like what we learned in chapter two they co-function together they blend with each other right and we'll also talk about uh, the ministry of the teacher and the pastor going forward and we'll see that even there you will have the mention of the evangelist you will have the mention of uh, you know while learning about the teacher you'll have the mention of the pastor so you see there's this there's this correlation it's beautiful right? paul is writing to timothy 
who's a pastor of the church and says, Timothy, this is my last letter. I'm going to die now. But what you do is do the soul winning work of the evangelist. Isn't that very interesting? Right? So, so we see that Timothy also did the ministry of the evangelist. And likewise, there would have been many, many, many others. We know that in, in the church in Antioch, they raised up many, many uh, you know, leaders very fast. The church of Jerusalem had about 12,000 odd people already. And church in Antioch is growing. Thousands of people are coming. So Paul and Barnabas come there to look after the church in Antioch. And by the time they went there, they were already prophets and already evangelists and everything was going on there. Right? So I'm sure that, you know, maybe they're not mentioned in the New Testament, but there would have been hundreds of people who are doing the ministry of the evangelist. Right? Now, this should... You know, really, you know, while I was reading this, it really struck my mind uh, that we are not to exclude ourselves in the ministry. Right? We are never to do that. Uh, we can't say, hey, I'm only a worship leader, so I am good at that, so I will do only that. And remember, God can take you out of your comfort zone. Right? Uh, we should be willing to get out of our comfort zone. Oh, I remember, you know, there was um, a time that, oh, many, many years ago, uh, we were teaching, I was teaching about evangelism and uh, um, one of the students, right, this was during those times when we were, you know, only face to face and there was no online and all of it. Um, and so I was teaching and the student was very shy. He just wouldn't talk. Right? So we used to have role plays, right? So I would be like somebody who's receiving the gospel. And uh, at one one of the instances, I'll be, uh, you know, very kind. Another instance, I'll be, you know, kind of stern. And so we would do these role plays. But this boy said, uh, you know, he came up to me, he said, Pastor, please don't call me because I'm very scared. I can't do this. I don't think God has called me for this. Uh, but I told him that, hey, why don't you try? You just try it. This is a classroom. Nobody's going to you know, laugh at you. Nobody, we're all learning together. Uh, so he said, give me two more days. Next week, I'll do it. Two, three days. More. So I said, okay. But he came the next week. And out of all of them, he did a beautiful job of you know, uh, just giving a defense for the gospel. He did wonderfully. And by the time he had graduated, you, you know what he was used to do? He used to go out in, the, in his lunch breaks, have his lunch, and he would take those, you know, we had those pamphlets called What Can Wash Away My Sins and uh, No One But Jesus and all these pamphlets. So he would go and he would stand in the street corner where our Bible college was and he would give out invites. There was... And he he was called to be a worship leader. Right? He wanted to be a worship leader. But all of a sudden, there was this change in his heart. God took him from this place of being uncomfortable and this took him out of this comfort zone and put him there. Now he's a wonderful, wonderful, powerful uh, evangelist. But he's known as a worship leader. right? Uh, but he... Whenever he gets an opportunity, he shares the gospel, right? Uh, so never exclude yourself in the ministry. Never tell God, I can't do this, right? Say, God, if you want me to do it, help me to prepare, prepare me, teach me. Uh, and of course, God will give you the time, right? He'll give you uh, the ability, the patience, uh, and how to deal with it. But never say, God, I can't do. Right? Uh, as believers, we shouldn't do that. Be open to God's work. Right. So let's go to the next point. Let's look at the ministry of the disciples of Jesus. Now, the disciples have seen Jesus. Right? Now, they've seen that Jesus has gone to many places, ministered to many people, and they've seen, right? It's not like Jesus was sitting under the sycamore tree just enjoying himself. No. 
he was you know involved moving about in the in in the ministry right so here's an important thing that we can learn from the disciples of jesus did he carry it forth there are a couple of verses there let's try and read all those verses like mark chapter 3 was 14 and 15 and maybe one of us can open to luke chapter 9 1 to 6 all right let's read those verses Mark chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. Then he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, that he might send them out to preach, and to have power to heal sickness, and to cast out demons. Right. Thank you. And the next verse, Luke chapter 9, verse 1 to 6. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 to 6. When Jesus had called the twelve together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to preach the kingdom of God and heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for the journey, no stuff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra tunic. Whatever house, whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people don't welcome you, you shake the dust of your feet when you leave the town as a testimony against them. So set, so they set out and went from village to village, preaching the gospel and healing people where everywhere. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. Uh, let's go to the next one. Uh, Luke 10, verse 1, 8 and 9. Luke chapter, chapter 10. 10. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Verse 8. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick there and say to them the kingdom of god has come near to you verse 17 then the 70 returned with joy saying lord even the demons are subject to us in your name and he said to them i saw satan fall like lightning from heaven Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rosalind. Now, in all these instances, what do we see? We see that Jesus is telling his disciples, go, you know, in the first one we read, Mark chapter 3, he says, go from village to village, town to town. Right. And in all these verses, we see that Jesus is instructing his disciples, go from place to place, preach the gospel and signs, miracles and wonders will follow. And then we, the last verse we read, Luke, uh, Luke 10, verse 17 onwards, the 72 came back and said, uh, Lord, in your name, we were able to drive out demons. We were able to uh, cleanse the lepers. We did such great miracles. And so we see this pattern, right? The Lord Jesus, what he set the example. And then he said, you go and do it. As leaders, this is a very important aspect that we must follow. If we have people under us as leaders in the ministry, first do and then tell. Right? And that's where it's more powerful, right? The, apostle, the Lord Jesus didn't sit around and say, hey, anyways, I'm going to die on the cross and the work is going to be done. So in these three years, three and a half years, maybe one year I'll do ministry. Was one year enough? I think it was more than enough. It's all right, one year. Because the cross is anyway going to happen. Right? Uh, but three and a half years he went through those hardships he went through those difficulties he took his disciples he made them see his life 
right? Did he ever picture why, you know, James, the, the brothers of Jesus, did you ever think about that? The brothers of Jesus, you know, they, they said, oh, this guy is, you know, now he's trying some new tricks. But now all of a sudden, everything's changed in their lives because the truth was, you know, came into their heart. And so Jesus has called us to be his disciples. And so the commission is very clear. Go preach from town to town, from village to village, city to city. Now, how can I translate this into a season that I am in right now? Right, or this, or the, you know, you can say, hey, pastor, that is during, you know, Jesus's time. People didn't have, a, you know, nine to six job, so they can just go, work, do whatever they want, and come back. How do I translate it now? Right, maybe you're in college. You're, you have to be in one place. Right, you can't go from city to town to villages and all of those things. Right, or you're a working professional. You work Monday to Friday, nine a.m. to five p.m. You come back home. You've got your family, and there's no place of uh, being an evangelist. Right, or some of you may say, "I'm a housewife, so the whole day I'm working at home, getting things done. Then the children come back from school, and I have to look after the children. How can I go from city to city, town and to town? It's not possible. Now we must take text into context, right? What is the main message that we are receiving from these verses? Yes, anybody can share. What is the main message? What, is it that we should, you know, be traveling every time, or what is the main message that you get from these verses? Anyone would like to just share? What what do you think was the main message you got from all the verses that we read? Yes, anyone, go ahead. Irrespective of our place, be willing to share the gospel. Yes, very good. Thank you, John. Anybody else? From all the verses that we read. Yes, go ahead, Lubega. I think regardless of what we think our call is in life, we were called to fulfill the Great Commission. Yes. Regardless you. whether you think we're a pastor, a pastor, or a prophet, you must also be part of the evangelism team. Thank you, Pastor. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Lubeka. Yes. That's wonderful. Anybody else would like to share your thoughts? Okay, so he says, taking the initiative to go preach in the unreached. All right, that's good. That's good. Yes, so all these are right. So the main message that we get is God is calling us to reach out to people, not from our own abilities, right? But through his Holy Spirit, bringing signs, wonders, and miracles, right? He appointed people. He appointed his disciples, and he said, go. We are his disciples, right? So in a, in a season or in a time like we are in right now, maybe if you're working 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, you ask me, how will I reach out? You've got your office. You've got probably hundreds of people in your office that you can minister to. Right uh, during the lunch break, during the you know the the ten minute break, or you will have people going through challenges. Okay, so two. What about a housewife? Right, I'm at home just doing all the work. You have neighbors. If you're staying in an apartment or if you're staying close by, you will get opportunities. Right, and when you do that you are being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Now the problem is we made evangelism a picture of you know standing on the stage with hundreds and thousands of people. We need to remove that picture out of our mind. It's nice when it's like that, you know, to see that, but remove it out of our mind. The work that of the evangelist is also one-on-one, -on -one, right? 
and I think we learned last semester, you know, the power of a single invite. So it's even one-on-one. -on -one. So let's look at two people in the New Testament who are known to be as evangelists. And we read about it. Let's look at Philip. Now, each time Philip is mentioned in the scripture, he's ministering in different locations. I right? see that in your notes. In Acts 6, he's in Jerusalem. Acts 8, he's in Samaria. From Samaria, later on, he goes in the desert. Acts 8.40, he's in this place called Ozotus. Then the scripture says he preached the gospel in all cities. And the scripture doesn't mention the name of the cities, but you know, we see that Philip is moving from place to place preaching the gospel. Right. Finally, in Acts 21, where Philip is called the evangelist, he's preaching at Caesarea. It's so interesting, you know, how the Bible, the Bible doesn't call him evangelist for just, just you know, initially itself. There's there's such so much of order, you know. The Bible is so wonderful. You don't call Philip the evangelist in the first meeting itself. No. They were able to see the call of God in Philip's life. Hey, Acts 6, from Jerusalem to Samaria, into a desert, then to Azotos, to city, to city, to city, and preaching the gospel. Finally, he's come to Caesarea, and the writer, Luke, says, now, Philip the Evangelist. So our title is only through our works. Right? People see the fruit of our work, and... That's where the title has come from, right? And as believers, you and I, title should not be important, but people will recognize the calling, the gifting upon your life, and you will be, you know, uh, blessed. You will be used for God's kingdom. Right? People will recognize it. You don't have to fight for it. You don't have to fight for people to say, hey, you call me, I'm a pastor, you have to call me pastor. I'm an apostle, you have to call me that. You don't have to fight for it. People will recognize the gift and calling on your life after you do the work. They themselves will you know, honor you and bless you. Right. So an evangelist's primary function is to preach the gospel Secondly, is to exhort existing churches and stir them for the need of revival. Now, we see that, especially during days and now in this century, we see that evangelists used to go to churches and they exhort, they encourage the church. Now, I want to be very careful and want to put out this truth, right? Many a times, this has happened, right? And uh, there's a book on this. I forget the name of the book, but it's a very interesting study. Christianity, Christianity Today also wrote an article on this, right? What is the work of an evangelist? And, and in that, they write a certain article where this happened in the West. This pastor had a small church of about 200 odd people. And he was a very faithful pastor, and he did. He was doing a wonderful ministry, uh, very faithful to God, teaching the Word of God, preparing them. Uh, but one thing about him was, you know, he was word driven. So he would only preach and teach the Word, and which was powerful. Uh, but like in any place, there were people who are going through sicknesses, torments, and challenges. And one of the things that was lacking in the church was miracles, right? Now, we can't blame the pastor, oh, you're not praying enough, no. So he also began to pray and he was seeking God. Uh, now, it's not a magic potion. It's not something that we can drink and then uh, next week we can, you know, minister in healing and deliverance. So he was praying, seeking God, God, you know, let there be healings and miracles. So one day he thought, let me have this, you know, the church is so many sick people, so many of them going through problem. Let me have like a meeting and invite a, a preacher or an evangelist who can, you know, minister to them and pray for healing. So he invited somebody and uh, he came and he began to preach and teach the word. And, and there were many healings. People were delivered. 
and towards the end of it this is what he said he said in a couple of months from now i am starting a church around this place around this you know maybe somewhere away but i'm starting a church too so he just mentioned it right now next week sundays came and went sundays came and went and the pastor realized that a lot of people in church were missing all of a sudden the attendance has gone down to 120 140 and as he was praying he understood why this happened many of them went from this church to the church of that evangelist who started the church because he had you know this gift of healing and uh, miracles and people were delivered and all of that now it was a very very painful time for this pastor and he writes and he says did i do a mistake by inviting somebody is this what you know is it something is this is there unity in the body of christ what should i do he had many questions should i go and talk to the this man uh, or what should i do will it be christ like uh, now this is a very difficult situation to be in but remember uh, you know that as evangelists we are called to only empower and build up people not to bring division right so any of us if god is calling us and you know that you know you're going as a guest speaker to another church be very wise in what you do and say right because people like the gifts people like to go for the supernatural right there's nothing wrong in it uh, but they must also understand that, that there should be order in the church uh, and and so we as if people who are ministering in different churches must be very careful of this and this is just an example and i'm sure it's happened in many many other places um, so if you're an evangelist be very careful uh, when you're taking this step right an evangelist may also help start churches as philip did in samaria right it's not wrong to start churches right i'm not saying this evangelist did something wrong but but what was not right was announcing to this church that hey i'm starting a church there right uh, one of the things that i really appreciate in apc is it's not because i'm 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 a pastor here but uh, one thing that really i appreciate is when people come and visit us from different places they visit on sundays we always announce and we say if you're part of another church please be faithful there right what are we doing we are, we are trying to let the people know that hey we're all one body right? just that we are meeting in different places different styles of worship different sermons uh, different cultures but we're all one body so if you're part of a church that the word of god is being taught be faithful there that's very important right uh next one is paul now we see the apostle paul had a wonderful wonderful ministry 17 years of ministry 15 to 17 years counting from the first missionary journey to the third and we know his beautiful writings the revelations that god gave him he started about 20 odd churches but i'm sure there were many more because you know what now when you look at galatia it's about four to five churches uh, but the letter to Galatians is just one church, right? One to the Galatian church. Uh, he raised many wonderful leaders. And the Apostle Paul did a wonderful ministry of an evangelist. But what was he called? It's called the Apostle, right? Now, I just want to uh, just show you a small, I'm not sure if I have that. Okay. Just hold on. It's a timeline of, okay, I don't think I can do that. Just give me one moment, please. Okay. 
it's so it's basically a timeline of uh, Paul's ministry and how he went about doing his ministry so I just wanted to show you so that we get an idea I hope I can do this yeah yeah everyone can see the screen okay right so you see here uh, it's just a simple timeline nothing complicated but it shows the it doesn't even show all the places that Paul ministered in but it gives us gives us a you know a gist of his ministry right you see here AD 34 he his conversion Damas he goes to Damascus and then he goes to Arabia then he goes to Jerusalem Tarsus Syria Sicilia then there's a need in Antioch so he goes to Antioch and remember Paul calls him Sorry, uh, Barnabas calls him, uh, looks for Saul in Tarsus, finds him, brings him to Antioch. Excuse me. So from Antioch, uh, they come to Jerusalem, Jerusalem to Antioch. Again, they go back to Jerusalem. And then the first missionary journey starts. He goes to Galatia. And Galatia, uh, he travels through uh, Lystra, Derby, uh, Pisidian, Antioch. And all those places and then he comes back to Jerusalem and then he goes on a second missionary journey he goes uh, to Thessalonica to uh, Corinth and, and and remember in Corinth he goes to many other places in Greece uh, the churches are not mentioned there right and then the third missionary journey Corinth he goes to Rome and during the house arrest again he's reaching out to people people were he you know for two years he was there just People were coming and visiting, and he was able to minister to people. He had freedom there. Uh, so we see the Apostle Paul, he didn't, you know, even from the time he started, he carried the same passion. Right? He didn't say, okay, now I am well advanced in ministry, so let me call get some other people from the team to you know do this evangelism of one on one and i will look after the main important works of you know writing letters to the churches and finding out he doesn't say that he doesn't mention anything like that right for paul the apostle even one soul mattered right and that is the heart of an evangelist right so so uh, the our achievements in ministry should not stop us from you know ministering to people right no matter how big we become we may it's wonderful when god blesses us blesses our ministry we come big um, look for opportunities to be that evangelist right even in church right now we are planning you know, coming series we're talking we're planning to do a, a faith and science where we are talking about you know many questions that people have regarding faith and how uh, you know and science and trying to get them together and and preach a, a series and why are we doing this because we want to reach out to people uh, it's not that okay we've grown very big and we don't want to be you know do the work of the evangelist no we want to do all we can to fulfill all five all the fivefold ministry as a church Right. So we'll stop here. We'll take a break. We'll come back in 10 minutes and then we'll go to chapter four and we look at the restoration of the ministry of the evangelist. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Thank you.